Hello. <laughs> so lightning talks begin. So I give you the order and you can change it. And nobody sent us PDFs, so we will branch ourselves and Oh you did it? They told me they told me you did not. So we will find yours. <laughs> They, t they just told me nobody did. So please send it to my email or branch your computer. Okay, so I give you the order. It's uh, Jean-Jacques Brucker, the first one. Then it's Judith. Then normally it's Thomas, but we'll see. <laughs> Then it's um, Martin, who will talk about Omemo, the big fish in Debian bowl. Cyril will talk about Lux, encryption again. Then uh, we have Sylvain, who will talk about the Les Rencontres d'Economique, which is a funny thing, but not only funny, that takes place here in Aix-en-Provence. It's, it's, um, you will see. It's a surprise. And uh, maybe we have two other talks. We'll see if they decide themselves. <laughs> okay, so let's begin with Jean-Jacques Brucker. Bon, tant pis. J'ai pas de micro. Bon. Oh. Ah. Oh, maybe. You want mine? I'll take mine. No, no, c'est bon. It's all right. So, uh, yes, so I'm Jean-Jacques Brucker, and I, uh, my company uh, is doing, um, you see, uh, soft kind of stuff, ultrasound machine, and uh, we are running uh, Debian-based uh, distribution, customized distribution. And uh, so we, we like open source, and we sometimes individually contribute to, some, to some, someone. Uh, yes, um, sorry. Um, so uh, times ago we have to to manage our um, our park of, of machine on the uh, on the customers we have uh, two software to do this and then i will present you a software we are agreed to to liberate uh, and to release so what is this software it's a uh, very lightweight sorry <laughs> I don't use to. I don't use to not touch my uh, <laughs> my training app. So? <laughs> not not really, but it's difficult to make the control shift uh, with only one hand, you know. <laughs> So yes, uh, we have uh, I have we have produced a uh, sort of little uh, lightweight software. We are ready to distribute. This software is yep. Uh, yes, uh, so I just ready the main page is here. Um, we did not know, but uh, on the, the only the only kind of software do this stuff we know at the time was uh, Spacewalk, and it was uh, too heavy for us. So, uh, we, so it's a little, uh, it's a little software uh, that overlay APT to, yes, uh, to 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 set to automatically uh, get the configuration we decided on our infrastructure for the customer and for our, for our devel uh, our devel machine. Um, so that's here are uh, the main uh, command we use, for example, um, and we have also some nice feature like the check and fix. We use that startup, which is very useful. For example, when you uh, there is a poor code during an upgrade, uh, it check it to continue the installation and go back. Uh, and uh, it's very comparing to, to the configuration. So now I know Ansible, and I should know it before. Maybe I did not make this software if I know it before. Uh, but it's very light, lighter than uh, uh, than, Spice, than um, Ansible. You, um, we will use it. I will show you by the demo. Up. 
So, here, on my machine. Uh, yes. So, very few, very few configuration option. Uh, there is a lot, so some more we can do only by uh, config, uh, config files. Um, and the main, uh, main things is a, a server, a KT server, and an identifier. And things are very simple. I will show you the KT servers. We could be anything, anywhere. It should be also on the, um, so we are, here are a repository, or one of our repository, we are using Repo Pro. We are using so uh, different uh, repository, some Debian mirrors, and uh, some of our package that overlay what is in Debian mirrors. So we have, uh, we say Gaussian Z package, uh, that uh, may, that some, some are only in our distribution, and some have the repackaged, uh, but we 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 don't like we we avoid to do this uh, because uh, it's uh, it's kind of fork and we have to maintain it and we don't necessarily have the resource to 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 maintain it. Uh, so what the, a server do is just here in UID. You know that, that that's some configuration from our, for development uh, product. And uh, if, for example, if I go on uh, this thing or product like this, no, that's quite quite simple. This that there is no extra extra file. I w I'll, yes, and uh, there is a list of package we are check and should be on your distribution. Just, and this is on the same servers than uh, the the KT. But this is a. Um, um, this could be anywhere else. This could be on the local machines. It could be a, a, just a configuration to have a list of package, and there is some other extra. You see, I use extra command in uh, Debian source list to to make extra extra directive to my uh, to my software. I could also download extra packages, and there is some. Uh, you see, the sometimes there is often. Uh, Two difference because between in a field I, I we I could check from signature from what package are are, are received to check uh, them so and uh, no that's that's not what I wanted to show Oops, no reception here. so if I uh, do a C2, okay. There is completion. I could also list to my package uh, configuration available from, uh, for, for, for us. So you see, I can switch my distribution to a configuration, to a port configuration, to an ISO, because uh, you somewhere ISO is uh, it's, uh, it's like, uh, because ISO use uh, repo like uh, Debian, you can switch it to, to an ISO to get on an old version to debug, uh, to debug uh, an old version of uh, producted software. And uh, I can switch easily. For example, for doing the testing up to the product develop. Uh, yes, and there is so authentication because uh, to to get a source list and uh, a custom made source list with uh, extra information, uh, we call it a note because uh, some uh, some on production, some machine cannot uh, cannot get an identifier. They they they, 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 they are forbidden to do it. So so it's uh, only yes. There is no. No question asked because it should run on it should run on production machine, and because somewhere uh, my colleagues also don't like uh, to have questions, don't know how to how to respond. They they are not uh, Debian administrator, and they maybe some of them don't use uh, Debian only to 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 develop. Uh, and another. 
on another tab. So it's, or maybe I, I should cancel. I will cancel it. Because it's up. Ah, yes, it's canceled. I don't have the same uh, display. Uh, if I do a check here, maybe I should. I think it's it's broken, and the check and fix will fix it. We continue the installation. One minute. Okay. No. Yes. You see. Uh, the, the the package, the meta package that specify your configuration is installed. But uh, some package are installed. It's too bad uh, these things. You see, and if the check and fix will fix this, so configure uh, things you you may have something. So it's uh, such kind of feature I would like maybe to to have in APT. I don't know if I don't have no if there exist. No. No, the, the you don't know if uh, can such kind of feature exists and uh, with APT, and it could be fine to have such uh, features on uh, for for for, for other. Uh, it's all right. Any question? Yes. Oh, no time. Over time. <laughs> so no questions. It's over time. Thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. So now it's Judith's time. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with Judith talking about uh, you are in a DD procedure to become a DD or no? In a way, yes, but it doesn't. Oh, do it's okay. It. Yes, but we had fun talking about that. So uh, I give you five minutes. <laughs> yeah, hello, hello, hello. Okay, first I wanted to. Oh, sorry. Can I? Yes, go. Yeah, first I wanted to read the DFS she, but anyone is able to recite this anyway. So I will read from the Debian Constitution. I will just jump right to the general rules. Uh, first, nothing in this Constitution imposes an obligation on anyone to do work for the project. A person who does not want to do a task which has been assigned or delegated to them does not need to do it. It's quite pretty cool if you're part of the video team and don't feel like operating the camera, you just can leave. Or if you are a treasurer and don't like to do account accounting work, you neither need to do it. Okay, this is boring, boring, boring. Oh, this is good. Uh, okay, it's just interesting if you are the DPL. So if one of you is the DPL, they should listen. The leader cannot appoint himself as their own delegate. So if you did this, it's against the constitution. And third one, a person may leave the project. That's really true. So if you become the D, this doesn't mean you sign a contract with the devil. Or resign from a particular post they hold at any time by stating so publicly. This is what I'm doing now. I accepted the task to hold this lightning talk, but I don't want to do it and I'm stating so publicly. Thank you. So nobody has questions. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yes, you do? Yeah. 
Okay, because it's election day, Thomas Koch will talk about that, I think. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, take your time. Uh, we can discuss constitution if you want. <laughs> Yes, do you have the VGA uh, cable? What else can I use? Uh, HDMI. No, he doesn't have it. Yeah. Use this fucking pad for this or something. Oh, I've got mini display for it. Yeah, is that possible? Yes. I found one person who has X Monad as a window manager, and I do. It's the first time I meet someone. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. Is there somebody else who uses X Monad? Yes. Oh, three! <laughs> I've never been in a room with three people using X Monad. <laughs> That's why it does not work. For no. me, it's <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. But it would <laughs> we can try with my computer. It's X Monad also, so maybe it will not <laughs> It's not X Monad. Uh, any computer that can I'm, be connected here and that I can I'm send my PDFs to, it's a pity that I. Okay, yeah. I will try with my We apologize for the brief, for the brief delay. We are currently experiencing technical issues. Ooh, he's found something. What have you found? Meanwhile, why not explore our duty-free offerings, which you can find in the magazine, the seat back in front of you. Operators will be standing by. <laughs> Video team is indeed working hard to resolve the issue. After we reach our cruising at altitude, yeah. <laughs> our flight attendants will be th coming through the aisle offering um, mostly gin, very little tonic. Maybe we might be able to scare up some fruit. We don't really know. In the meanwhile, please relax. Remind yourself where the paper bag is, also in the, se in the seat back pocket. Are you ready? No, still not ready. Um, oh, yeah. Ooh, there we are. Ada? Uh, <laughs> Just a moment, please. Oh, thank you. Okay, uh, today is election day in the European Union, so it's about election, democracy, European Union. I'm THK at Debian.org, required history knowledge for citizens. Uh, disclaimer, uh, I will hurt any feelings or previous knowledge. You might be disturbed. I'm sorry for that. I can't help it. So I'm in France. I'm a German. Sorry if I say anything about uh, France as a German here, but um, as uh, Wikipedia says, liberty, liberty, equality, fraternity was only one motto among others, and only later it was it became the official motto. So they rewrote history, and this is what I learned in uh, school in my history class, and only when I was in uh, Moscow in a history museum, they told me no, this was not true. And then I also learned that the uh, 
Declaration of uh, Rights. The first one um, has a big stamp on property. That's the important stuff. Now that people actually m have the right to own something and that it's not a feudal system anymore where with your property also comes responsibility. Property is now the important thing. So, next uh, in history, the USA. Um, it has been found out, uh, surprisingly, that it is not a democracy and c it can be measured. They took uh, 1,779 policy issues over two decades and measured how many of those issues were decided in the uh, sense of the majority or for those rich people. And surprise, it was always most of the time decided for the rich people, not for the majority. And the, you can find uh, YouTube talks from Michael G. Klarman uh, and his book, of course, who explains how the US Constitution became the way it is. And it was designed especially to not be democratic, but to protect the rich and powerful people from the will of the majority, but to hide it. And yeah, what else? My father always told me democracy is the best thing that could ever be invented, which is a lie because people thought about a council's republic, also in Wikipedia called Soviet Republic to make it sound scary. And mm, important things are you have an imperative mandate, people you send out, you tell them how they should decide and you can recall them at any point in time if you lose trust in them. And yeah, this has been tried in history. It has been tried in Paris. It has been shut down by the press. I'm sorry for that. It has been tried again after World War I in Munich. It has been shut down by social democrats. And it has been tried many more times and all of them has been shut down. Um, and I have learned about none of these events in history class, but you can still look them on, up in Wikipedia. Um, you only need to know about them. The other thing you could try is direct democracy. It is present in some of the constitutions of our lender, of our 60 lenders in Germany, but not in the, in the Grundgesetz of the Federal Republic of Germany, because they were afraid that the Germans could vote to unite with East Germany and um, become too democratic. Yeah, and the current, uh, we don't have a constitution in Germany because our Grundgesetz uh, said we should get a constitution voted on by whole of Germany once we unite. This hasn't happened in 1990 and so we have something that is not foreseen by the fathers of the Grundgesetz. And yeah, I learned in uh, politics that you should separate legislative, executive and judiciary uh, powers um, to get a real democratic system that are the people you can look up for that, the philosophers. And in the European Union, we don't have that. Um, the European Parliament has no right of initiative. It can not say we want this bill uh, to be voted on. Only the European Commission can say you, Parliament, vote on this bill. And the Parliament can only ask the Commission, please, please, would you be so kind to let us vote on something? And the Commission says, no, we don't know what says. Um, the Commission is not uh, elected democracy, democratic. It is appointed by the governments of the states of the European Union. Yes, that means you vote a government, you vote a parliament, the parliament votes a government, the government appoints a commission, and the commission then uh, says, writes the bills that the parliament that you vote today on can. Um, yeah, this is so much indirection, it has nothing to do with democracy. Uh, yeah, the, the fastest explanation of capitalism. It's a private ownership of means to produce goods, the private ownership of, of media, the private ownership of essential infrastructure. And the European Union has been uh, designed 
to protect capitalism and to make sure that none of the countries of Europe will ever become anything else but capitalistic. And it uh, does so by guaranteeing the free movement of goods to avoid local laws, the free movement of capital to avoid local taxation, the free movement of services to avoid us creating unions so that you can always have uh, work being done by somebody else, and the free movement of perf persons so that we can always get the cheapest uh, Romanians or Bulgarian, Bulgarians um, pulling down our salaries. And yeah, any hope after this? I have, <laughs> I, I like the Yellow Wests, what I read about them in Germany. Um, we have Fridays for Future, which is also rather strong in Germany. And they had 320,000 people on the street yesterday. We have this rebellion, e Extinction Rebellion movement. We have Developers for Future, if you're interested in that. And the, the Fridays for Future call uh, uh, for a general strike in the whole world on September 20th. Um, to get us away from uh, climate crisis and our current trajectory. Two minutes left for questions. <laughs> it's possible to have the first slide? Second? No, before. The slides will be uploaded. Yeah, okay. Don't send us to any secret service. Yes. <laughs> okay, then, yeah. Uh, happy voting. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so, um, surprise talk <laughs> by Rafael Herzog, who will maybe talk about the way of elections, the way elections go in Debian, which is uh, Condor's method, I think. Yes, don't say too much, so otherwise I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this one is for me and the other one. Well, it's here, it might be turned off. Oh. Check if there's light off. I'll give you 10 minutes. Who is Kirsch? No question. Who is Kirsch? Who is Kirsch? Okay. I, I was hoping that uh, Thomas would speak a bit about uh, how we elect people in Debian, but he did not, so I'm going to try to explain it a bit. But first I will explain why it's important to know how we do it in Debian. Because, at least in France, uh, we have a good system where the biggest minority is always winning. And since the biggest minority is always annoying people, we always have to vote uh, for something uninteresting. You know, in France, we elect, well, we have many candidates at the first round, and so many people with the same ideas, but since they are different people and can't agree together, they go in separate candidates. And then the votes are spread over many candidates. But only the two better candidates have the right to go to the second round, and on the second round, you only have to choose between two. Unfortunately, the two biggest minorities uh, tend to be, uh, well, racist people and extremists uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, well, kind of people that I, don't, that I don't like. So I have to vote between two bad choice. Uh, nowadays, we have computers, we have good systems, we have intelligent people, and there are better ways to elect people but we don't use them. Uh, I will present you at least two ways to elect uh, 
people. The first one is what you use in Debian. It's called the Condorcet method. It's relatively easy to understand, not so easy to uh, make the count at the end of the election. <laughs> so basically, you have all your candidates and you rank them. This is my preferred and my second choice, third choice. You, uh, you can have multiple choice ranked at the same level. Uh, sometimes you have four candidates you don't know, you put them last, but uh, at least you don't make any preference between them because you have no real preference. And to find out the winner, you make comparison two by two. So you go over all the votes and uh, you check how many times this choice, this candidate was ranked above the other one. Ideally, there's one candidate who uh, is above all the others. And usually that's the case. But usually that candidate is possibly or likely not the preferred choice of, uh, well, it might be more uh, the second choice of many people instead of the first choice of a uh, few, uh, if you see what I mean. Uh, the candidate will be more consensual, it will be less extremist, it will be a mix of uh, many views, usually. Um, so this is a good system. Unfortunately, there are a few exceptions where uh, you don't have any clear winner. You can have a, a candidate A is preferred over candidate B, who is preferred over candidate C, who is preferred over candidate A, 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 A again. So it's a, a loop. So there are special rules to, to uh, resolve those tie. Uh, and here comes into play uh, the how many times you were ranked number one, number two, and those figures will count to find out who, is, who will win the election between this tie. Um, recently for the uh, presidential election in France, I participated, participated to something which is called uh, uh, laprimaire.org. So it's primary election. Uh, the idea was to uh, have many uh, uh, candidates, uh, but not politicians, uh, individuals like you and me. Uh, uh, and uh, they wanted to select one among all those to represent uh, the people and not the uh, political party that we all know. And uh, they used a new voting system uh, where well, it's si quite similar because you evaluate all the candidates, but you, you give a sort of mark. This one is very good, this one is good, this one is middle, this one is bad, and this one is really bad. And uh, in this situation, the one uh, which wins is the one who has the better mark when you count, uh, well, Obviously, uh, everybody has, uh, uh, has been ranked by everybody, but uh, you, you count how many percent of the f v voters uh, have g given you... Well, you start from the bottom. So uh, very bad, you have 10 percent, for example. Uh, then uh, bad, uh, 20 percent, you are 30. And uh, then you have uh, good, uh, 25, you have 55 percent. Uh, when you cross the 50 percent mark, is your... Uh, uh, is your final mark if you want. In this case, you are a uh, well, middle or good candidate. And uh, the candidate with a better mark is the one who wins. And if two candidates have the same mark, then you look at the precise person percentage that you got. It's similar in spirit, but it's easier to maybe explain uh, because, well, you, you just have to say what you think about each candidate. Uh, but it, at the end, it comes close to ranking all the candidates. Uh, in this uh, experiment, uh, there are so many candidates that, uh, well, there are two rounds. Usually you don't need that if you rank everybody, but when you have too many candidates, you can't uh, rank everybody. So what they did is that uh, we were, all voters were given a subset of all the candidates and we had to evaluate a subset. 
and then they put this together and uh, uh, we identified a few winners from the, from the first round and then the second round we had to uh, vote only among the winners of the first round. So, uh, I invite you to uh, think about this, uh, but on a personal level, my number one criteria for deciding who I am going to vote for is, are they willing to change the rule because the rules are broken and I really want something else? That's my first criteria. And I invite you to use the same criteria because, well, we need to change uh, the situation. Thank you. And if you need a second criteria, uh, I would go for basic inc income, if you know about it. But maybe someone else can present this in the next lighting talk. <laughs> Thank you. If you, if you want more information about this kind of systems, on YouTube you can find CGP Grey. It's a channel with, it's done a, um, a few very good videos explaining those voting system with the good and bad aspects of everyone, so it's each one. It's very, very interesting. CGP Grey, like the color, yeah. There's also uh, uh, a French YouTube channel, I think it's a science experience. Uh, explain to cats. Statistics. Uh, statistics explain, explain to cats okay. with uh, interesting uh, case where you, well, he, he took a special case where we, and he tried uh, different methods and you get a different result for each <laughs> voting system and it's inter interesting to know the limits of all the systems. In French, it's les statistiques expliquer à mon chat. So are there other questions? So now it's, yes? Question? It's Cyril. Do you have questions about the game? Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Ready for 10 minutes? Yes? Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about Lux. Lux and Lux2. Uh, basically that's about encryption. Uh, it was a bit mentioned in the talk yesterday about hardening the, um, the uh, Debian installation. Uh, we mentioned Equipped and I'm going to talk about another technology which is Lux. Lux is basically Linux Unified Key Setup. Uh, it's a bit abstract, but basically that's uh, make it possible to work on containers that are fully encrypted. We work on a block device level, which means basically that we are working on a disk or partition, but not on specific file systems. Um, we are going to create uh, what is called a container and then we are going to use this uh, decrypted container as a file system, and then we can use LVM or XFS or VFAT or whatever you like. That basically makes it possible to have encryption on a full disk, which is great. Here uh, is a screenshot from the Debian installer running in graphical mode when you ask how you want to partition your disk. By default, we go for the very first entry, which is guided partitioning using the entire disk. 
It's also possible to use the entire disk, but to set up LVM so that you can resize your partitions. And the third option is to use the entire disk, use LVM, but with encryption underneath. That means that first you uh, set up, uh, or you Debian install it as, um, the encryption layer is set up, and then we have the LVM uh, system which is set up on top of it, and then one or several partitions are going to be set up with appropriate file systems. This is great. Uh, we can check what's happening uh, when we want to boot such a system once it has, been, it has been installed. Oh, sorry about that. So my system is booting and right after Grub uh, has had uh, its, um, its usual timeout and uh, booting the Linux kernel, we then run the initramfs, which is a bunch of scripts and Linux kernel modules and so on. Uh, that sets up the whole file system, mounts everything we need to, uh, to finalize the, the boot process. And then I'm asked for the passphrase to unlock the, the encrypted container that I mentioned before. And after a while, because there are many security stuff related um, operation going on and so on, um, the, the container is unlocked, we access the file systems and we can finish the boot sequence. And we finally reach the usual uh, screen. So everything is great. Uh, the talk is already over or something like that. No, because it's not really full disk encryption. Due to previous limitations in bootloaders, it was not possible to have the bootloader um, decrypt all the files it needed to boot, like the Linux kernel, the initramfs, and so on. So historically, we've been using a separate slash boot partition when we use encrypted LVM. This is a screen with uh, Gparted looking at the, um, the disk image I'm using for this demonstration. And you can notice that the first part is separate. That's our uh, slash boot partition. And the second one is what is being used as the Lux container. So when you unlock the container, that's the second part. And the first one is in plain text. So anybody can look at your kernel, uh, initramfs, bootloader configuration, and so on. So it's not really that great. Uh, and then if you look at the, the small tree, um, the second partition, so number two, is extended. It contains a Lux container, which itself is used as um, um, a physical volume for LVM, which is then split into several bits and pieces, but you can't see that in Gparted because it's encrypted anyway. So uh, that was for the bad news. But then, good news, it's actually possible to reach full disk encryption because for quite a, a number of releases, I'm not sure exactly when it started, but nobody worked on implementing that into DI. Uh, but Grub does know about CryptoDisk. It can deal with Lux on Linux and Jelly on FreeBSD. And as I said, it's not really new, but nobody worked on integrating that into Debian Installer. And Debian Installer is really making very hard for you not to have a separate boot partition. So you need to maybe use Precede to work around all the checks we have to actually make sure you have a separate boot partition. But we can hack, hack, hack. I'm going to uh, let down the mic for a moment because I've got a series of commands to run. But basically what I'm doing is, that would be extra great. Thank you. So I'm going back, I'm going back to, my, um, to my virtual machine. I turned it off because I'm um, a bit brainless. Doot, doot, doot. I unlock um, the partition, it boots. 
I log in. I'm going to copy the whole uh, slash boot directory. So it's living on a separate partition. I'm going to make a copy on uh, the root file system under a different name so that it stays around. So boot.new when I'm unmounting the file system. So at this point, uh, slash boot is empty. I'm going to remove the, mount, the, the mount point and move back the copy into place. It just to make sure I'm not uh, doing wrong stuff with um, uh, file permission and so on. Uh, and then I make sure that I comment or completely delete uh, the moon point in FS tab, so that we are going, we are no longer going to use slash boot from the uh, plain text first partition. We are going to use the copy we made inside the um, the root file system. So I'm getting rid of this separate moon point, and the trick here is to configure a new variable in. I'm not sure whether that's. Hopefully that's readable. Uh, I'm going to set an extra variable which is grub enable crypto disk equals y for yes. I'm going to um, update grub's configuration just to make sure, so with update grub. But the critical part is running grub install on dev SDA so that it reinstalls all the bits and pieces it needs. Okay, I'm going to move that up a bit. Is it not quite? It's tricky with VMs. Uh, so basically, that was update grub and then grub install. Those commands are run anyway when you install a new kernel and so on, but I'm making extra sure that uh, my la latest modifications are taken into consideration. And then rebooting. Now that's Grub asking me for a passphrase and no longer Grub or the kernel or the init RMFS. It's really the bootloader. You have to be careful to type your passphrase in QWERTY and not your regular um, layout, uh, which can be tricky if you have accents or whatever. Now Grub is loading and then uh, loading Linux and then the initRMFS because I didn't do any more advanced tricks is asking me for the passphrase again but the partition is already unlocked so you can just type the passphrase again with your regular layout and ta-da. So you, it is possible to have full disk encryption but if you look at a buster, it's no longer possible because we switched to Lux2, which is a different format. I'm um, really short on time, but basically we've got um, to deal with... <laughs> My computer no longer wants to show you more slides, so anyway. It comes with JSON in addition to binary headers, so it's a bit scary, but I'm managing, and hopefully in a few weeks, we should have uh, something in Grub, uh, at least for people to try, if they are so crazy to do so. Thank you so much. <laughs> so maybe we can take questions at the end, or during during Martin install. Do you have questions? Yes? Okay. So the question is, uh, now where is the code which does uh, decryption? Uh, so in, in UFI si systems, yeah, I, I could guess in the EFI partition, you could have a lot more code that can do that, but on uh, MBR system, does it work on MBR system? It, it seemed to be, according to the departed screenshot, it was that. Um, that works on MBR systems uh, without any uh, tricks because probably Grub is smart enough to stash all the bits and pieces it needs at the right place. Uh, on EFI systems, um, we might run into issues with bootloader needing more space, 
but then you don't have necessarily stuff into the ESP, so the system partition for EFI systems, but you've got another small partition that is really recommended, uh, especially by Grub de developers, that's called BIOS boot partition. Um, they recommend at least 64 kilobytes, but usually I use just one megabyte just to be extra sure. And then the Grub has some extra space to to put um, bits and pieces it would need to access stuff because it, it wouldn't fit into the, the small areas that we have in EFI systems. So it's already taken into account on EFI systems uh, with the BIOS boot partition. And on MBR systems, are these, are, is everything on the first sectors of the disk? Everything can fit really? I'm really not sure where it fits, but it does. And I'm working on uh, adding some more code and I'm ho hoping it won't overflow. And that was one of the big challenge with adding some JSON library. And um, thankfully there are some other um, implementation using C macros, so that works better. Are you ready? <laughs> He's ready. Thank you. Thank you, sir. to Cyril. So you're just, now that no, like the init SF RAM is encrypted, Grub isn't. So you're moving the, the point of attack to modifying the Grub code if somebody accesses your code. So then the solution would be to use something like uh, heads for the, that uses the, the, the TPM chip to see if Grub has been modified or not, right? Uh, I guess with uh, secure boot you get, you're sure that grub wasn't modified okay. because there's Using a signature on, on it anyway. Okay, but that for, for that you need to have a chip that supports that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to pretend I know anything about security. Uh, it was <laughs> like people ge getting upset, oh we can't do that anymore, oh why, oh it's bad. But yeah, I want to fix stuff. Um, the the model the uh, attack model is not really uh, any part of with which I'm comfortable anyway, so people will know. Okay, Thank uh, you. now a very short and non-technical talk. Uh, I promised 192 seconds, which depends on your questions. So um, anybody. Uh, uses probably uh, Android phones apart from me and some of you are using conversations as a chat program and uh, some of us manage to get our parents and and uh, other family to use uh, XMPP that way um, so uh, that's mainly uh, because everybody loves end-to-end -end encryption and there's OMEMO, which is uh, the modern style of uh, encryption for XMPP or Java. Um, and the nice thing about it, it's mainly it works with multiple devices, um, including your own multi-devices, multiple devices, other people's multiple devices, and it, only, uh, it also works if uh, the other person is offline, which is very important, uh, which was not possible with OTR. And uh, the OMIMO algorithm and the technology is taken from Signal, which probably most of you know. Um, in Debian 9, uh, we have exactly one client supporting OMEMO, which is Gatchem. Uh, nice, but uh, not everybody wants to use Gatchem. It's a little bit more technical. And fortunately, in Debian 10, there are more clients to choose from. Uh, apart from Gadrim, there's uh, Dino, which looks a little bit like Conversations, only for the desktop. There's uh, C+, um, yeah, also an older client. There's uh, Salua uh, which has a command line and a console client. And now in Experimental, there's also the latest Profanity version, a console client too, which uh, does support Omemo. 
now we need your help, um, mainly document stuff, uh, packet things. Uh, there is still um, some stuff for memo to package, for example, support for Pigeon or for uh, Chatty, the client for, for the Librem 5 phone. Um, you can do screenshots. You can do tests, especially with Omemo. Sometimes one-to-one -one works, but group chat does not work or other problems. Um, please test this and report bugs. Try things and uh, yeah, you find more information on our wiki. That's it. Any questions? Uh, just as a note, the version 4 of OTR should support multiple devices and offline messaging, but I don't know how, how much the process is advanced before actual usability in wide yeah. scale. I, I heard also about it, but I'm, I'm not an expert on this. Yeah. Let's hope it will work. Other questions? Um, just, uh, uh, oh, uh, sorry, uh, what is required on, uh, on uh, XMPP servers for, to support this? Um, uh, the ones, specifically ones uh, packaged in Debian? Yeah, uh, um, on the server side, everything is there. Um, the server only needs to uh, support PEP, which is a standard that exists since a long time, so uh, practically all more or less modern Prosody or EJABAD installations do support OMEMO well. So there's not much to do. Okay, next one. Uh, next one is Sylvain. And we also have a last one after Sylvain. And that's all.
Do you hear me? Okay, so first, huge thanks to the video team for having the DisplayPort adapter. That, that was life-saving. <laughs> so, uh, this, it will be in English. This is a, a recycling of a talk uh, made in a French event, and I'm just recycling my part, and I will tell it in English, and we'll see how it goes. So, the name of the talk in, in French was Pay ton logiciel libre, uh, like pay your libre software. Uh, so, at this part, we were uh, saying, well, some, we could think it will never work, nobody will give, but actually, in all the, in all the fields, uh, there, there, there is hope. Um, for example, in video channels, due to changing the dominant mm, business models about the rules, especially on YouTube, many wanted to get out of dependencies of publicity, and there is uh, on a huge uh, proprietary platform uh, named Patreon, which is quite popular. Uh, there are more than 600 channels which get uh, at least 2,000 US dollars per month. And about podcasts, I found that there are more than 500 channels that get more than $200 per month. So this is working, direct remuneration. Uh, recurring payment is something that is working in other fields. But the caveat is that often there are counterparts, uh, bonus content, so not open access, but th most of the time it's, it's that. But about Libre software, there's no, there's no direct uh, counterpart, so what can we do to compensate? Transparency, to see that what we are actually contributing to, that we are not alone. Uh, to reassure, that because there could be uh, suspicions, and what can help, it would be a progress bar to see that, yes, we are going to this goal, which can, can pay something, 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 part-time salary, full-time salary, including um, health insurance, uh, uh, all, the, all the stuff that, and also, the amounts are usually bigger that we can see because it's the raw salary that what a company have to pay. So we should not be uh, offended and seeing someone oh, 500, uh, five hundred, five thousand dollars per month. That's a lot. Not actually, actually, in many countries, that's what you have to pay to have everything uh, covered for someone. So one example is the platform this route, uh, which. Uh, have a report when we can see the expense uh, and uh, what is happening. Okay. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. And yes. Um, and you can see that the, 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 the expense, uh, the incomes, and then you see that in the end they are even donating to upstream projects. Another one is Nos Oignons, which is uh, for hosting Tor servers. Uh, this route is hosting email, is a provider of email and cloud and, and other online services. Uh, we can see that there are progress bar and they say, uh, if we have more than this, we will open a new relay. If you are less than this, we have to close the relay. So you, it's, it's unmaterial, but you, you still can have this feel that you get something when you're done. And this is important to motivating to to donate to this project. Another project is Funkwell, and you can see that, yeah, it, we, we want to fund the dev salary, and as I use the platform Open Collective for doing this project, which is like Mastodon for music. Mm, and uh, 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 so I'm going back to the slides, which is somewhere. Okay. Um, oh, so, no, I want to finance, it's not about donation, it's not about charity, it's about buying our software, even if it's indirect, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, non, it's a non mandatory payment, uh, which can be at, a f at pay what you want, and you can pay after using the software as a consumer, this is a dream, we, we, sh we should be wanting to have everything that works this with this model, so when there are software we are which are working like this, we should be giving our money in priority to them. Otherwise, 
advertising, the advertising world model will triumph, the proprietary model will win. So now we want to give, I'm, I'm throwing money on screen and nothing happens. What can I do? Several platform, Libera Pay, uh, which, uh, which you can see, you, 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 have, you have teams, uh, you have organizations, uh, you have individuals, uh, and, and you can then say, I want to, uh, I want to, to, to give, oh, I want to give money to uh, every, every, every month, uh, give that amount of money. And a very interesting thing is that a system about pledge and, and then you can say, okay, Let's Encrypt is not there, uh, but I pledge to the people who possess the account Let's Encrypt on Twitter, if they join the platform, it will, it will activate the 42 pledges of these people. So that's also a way to uh, having to an incentive for, for people to donate. And that would be a way to... Is that Debian? Yes, there is Debian, <laughs> the GitHub account. So another platform is uh, Open Collective that we, are, that we have seen uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, Funk Whale. The good thing is that you can also submit invoices, so there is a lot there is a system of transparency where uh, you, can, you submit invoices, they are published, you see who gets the money for what, so to building trust, again, this is important. And um, uh, Bounty Source Salt, it, it, it's, it's, la, it's, like la, it's similar to LiberaPay, LiberaPay and Bounty Source Salt and Open Collective are Libre, uh, even on the server side. Um, what else? Uh, wire transfers, we don't think about that, but actually wire transfers, there is no fee. So if you don't like Visa, MasterCard, and PayPal, you can, uh, you can avoid these payment processes by, if you are in the same country, or in example, in the European Union, you can do without fees, give some money to project. If they publish their uh, bank account details, you can set up a monthly or yearly donation and it will work. So another, uh, that's, that's another uh, option. Last, op uh, last option is Patreon, which is quite <laughs> popular, even a bit amount Libre software. And about, so where do we start to find our favorite project and give them that? There is on this wonderful proprietary forge uh, a project which is a directory uh, about about f uh, recurring fundraisings, uh, and they are on various platforms. Uh, there is not only Patreon, and this there you can go and uh, uh, and give. Uh, this is how you can first see which project can interest me. So in the future, Snowdriftcan.coop hopefully will manage to launch. They have a very interesting uh, model. The mechanic is very interesting. Uh, and I recommend you to read the website and the wiki is uh, a gold mine uh, about all the crowdfunding and general. So the philosophy is awesome. Uh, yeah, I show this. So conclusion. So uh, finance and pay your free software even if your global budget is one euro by month. Uh, everyone should at least find one euro per month to uh, pay for the Libre software, whether it's a big project, whether it's a small project. If everyone donates many projects, we get funding. We, we don't have yet the issue uh, that only few projects get a, a lot of money. Don't worry about that. Just donate to what you like. So uh, thanks a lot. That was a presentation done with uh, f friends, Ed Anano and Emmanuel Reva. Uh, and we made a website, paytonlogiciellibre.eu. Uh, where we put the slide and resources about that. So, thanks. Okay, so last lightning talk, if we succeed to make it work in, no, 
Okay, no time. I'm, we are sorry, the video team has to pack. So sorry, Sylvain. <laughs> thank you, everyone. And thank you to the video team. And sorry for the 10 minutes of lateness. Thank you. <laughs>